I think for me, I just sort of take it all in because it's in a valley and in sort of one glance, you can just take in the, the lovely historical nature of it with those old paths and the old routeway and the old trees and the woodlands and the, the common hundreds of different plant species, the lichens, the, the birds to me and the, and the leaping salmon are sort of, they're, they're at the end of the food chain and they show to us what all the glorious things that go follow on below that. Francis Kilvert, who in um, the summer of 1876 was walking up the Marteg Valley, commented on how lovely it was well, to hear the cuckoo there. If you're lucky enough to be in a Gilvach in May, you still hear the cuckoo up on the hill there. The fact that we can still hear a cuckoo is a great celebration of what the Radnorshire Wildlife Trust achieved in keeping those wonderful habitats going. So that was the main driver for me, is making sure that here we are 30 years later, we've still got it. And the cuckoo is hopefully on, on his way, her way back to um, from, from Africa to come and sing to us again this spring. My first memory when I got, when I got there the first morning, um, I was by myself. I moved in initially by myself and then Friedel came about uh, a month later. I was walking around the corner and just ahead of me was a stoat pulling a rabbit down the drive. Um, which again, I mean, I'd seen hundreds of stoats before, but it was just to have it just outside the front, the front door. Um, and another very strong memory is sitting over in the picnic area with my sandals on, enjoying a well, well-deserved glass of beer. And a polecat came out of the heap of um, wood in front of me, about six inches away from my toes, and sort of looked around. I didn't move, and I thought, well, if I move, it'll probably bite me on the toe. But, uh, you know, these were the sort of things that just happened in the Gilvac all the time. You know, you can't just pick one instance. Uh, it was just all the time you would have these little flashes of... Uh, brilliance. Um, yeah. But what we also had, what we did have, which is worth mentioning, is uh, glowworms in the railway cutting. So come June, if it, if it was a nice mild June, you could go down into the railway and all the banks would just be covered in these little lights from the glowworms. They're great for butterflies as well. Green hair streaks, but you also have purple hair streaks in the upper tree. But you, I think only once, twice did I see a purple hair streak. You know, but green hair streaks were as common as anything. I know the time, 4.30 on a November afternoon. I was at the, uh, at the waterfall watching salmon. And uh, I never saw it arrive in that, what I call the middle pool. There's two waterfalls that go back, the top one and the lower one. You know, the bit in between, I always call it the middle pool. And suddenly there's an otter, just its head swimming across the middle pool. Well, I never saw it arrive or anything, and it came out on the opposite bank, climbed up the bank, and it scratched itself like a dog. You know, I'd never seen one out of the water before, and it was just sort of like a cat, and a dog. It sort of it came down and dived into the water. It was about a six foot drop from the top to the water, but it it had been there before, obviously, because it knew and it dived in and had gone. But I have seen the salmon jumping down. I think that's lots of people a very special time to go down there. It's such a dramatic little stretch of the river when it goes crashing down through the rocks. And uh, it's very exciting to see the salmon. And um, that was a thrill when, when we first went to see them. It walked below the platform and if you'd had a stick, you could have poked it with a stick. And... Uh, we uh, were all leaning over. Cool. It's hard to keep quiet. And Viv's saying, Shh, keep quiet, keep quiet. But we're all going, wow, oh, Arthur. Oh. But it didn't take any notice of us. It, it sort of went, went along. And uh, what I call the salmon ladder, where they leap, you can't see that. It, there's three stages to it. But you can't see that when the water's rushing down. But And it went in. It sort of slid into the water halfway up this salmon ladder. So the water swept it down. You were, it's strange to watch these things do this. As soon as it had got into the pool at the bottom, it had got a salmon and it was a big one. 
it was as big as the otter. It held it, it, it clutched it between its front legs and it was holding it and its tail was up and its tail was bigger than the otter's head, wasn't it? What's this fly like? And he said, oh, oh I think it's a moth. And Richard Knight was a bit in front, but he's into moths, so he comes back and, oh, it's a clear wing, several types of clear wing. We didn't know which sort. For some reason, I'd got a moth book in my pocket. Fancy that, I never carry a book around. And I got a moth book in my pocket, we got it out. It was a Welsh clear wing. Richard was really excited. That was the discovery of the Welsh clear wing in Radnorshire. The mice, they'd actually stare you out. They were really cheeky, but that got dealt with over a period of time, a long time. <laughs> a long time. <laughs> but saw no end of stoats up on the hill at the back there where the anthills are, no end of stoats, and round the farmyard. But the weasels in the wall, they, they were a bit special, they really mm. were. Perhaps only be one, but because of the quickness and the way it moved in and out the wall, you'd think there were six, but probably just the one. The owls, the calling of the owls, the first woodpeckers drumming. And then there was one story I heard about the salmon poachers, and it it really pushed my buttons. Um, one night the river watchers were out, and they were waiting in the little hut, which is now a bird hide. And it was a railway hut. Anyway, the poachers tied them in, blocked the door so they couldn't get out, went and got the salmon and went home and left them there. <laughs> yeah, I like that. I used to like to walk along the river and just where the bit of the island is, you can sit and look down on the river. And I used to like that bit. It's the opposite way that Pip went, but that was my favourite spot. And it, it became there a, a babbling brook. You could hear it babble, you know, over the water. It was lovely there. And to sit there, no matter what time of year, it was nice. And I remember one flood we had there. It was in the September. It was a flash flood that came down and the river was a torrent never in my life had i seen anything come up so quick but then again go down so quick the tawny owl was i lay in bed one night and i could hear barn owls and i opened the window was open that's all to the and i leaned out and in the uh, the bar next door they got a dovecot uh, dovecot thing they must have been young and they, they weren't uh, they weren't born in there but there were young palm owls in there one, one, one came out and another one was on the roof of the uh, visitor centre across the yard I think there were about three or four of them calling I think that was the year when we had uh, barn owls in the barn owl box so I think they'd come from there they didn't, they didn't breed in that dovecot but they were in there the world with this amazing library of genetic diversity which in future we could draw on um, we don't know when we might need it but uh, you know sure enough I think you know as the climate warms I'm now seeing a rust fungus attacking ryegrass and it may well be that ryegrass is not the best plant for the future so some of the grasses the wild grasses that we've got to give back maybe the future of upland agriculture uh, who knows uh, but if we've lost them we won't have that particular option any longer.